Do you believe in God? Either you believe or you don't believe and you don't have any other choices. What Pascal is doing is giving you an argument that you should believe that God exists. So first of all, yes, this is a contingent situation because he believes you could choose your beliefs. You could but don't have to believe in God. It is possible and not necessary for you to believe in God. It is possible and not necessary for you to believe God does not exist. Between those two options, he says that it's in your best interest to believe that God exists. Here's his argument. We already know, because I've already said, that you've got two choices when it comes to what you think about God's existence, but also you have two choices about what's real, whether or not God exists. Either God exists or God does not exist, and there are no other options. So we can put those four options together. First of all, Either God exists or God does not exist. Assume that God exists. You've got two choices. Either God exists and you believe in God, or God exists and you do not believe in God. But assume that God does not exist. Either God does not exist and you don't believe in God, or God exists and you do believe in God. So these are the four choices. Let's think about your possible risks, your possible rewards. So let's think about the outcomes. What would be the consequences of each of these four options? And this is going to get complicated, but we'll make it more simple before ending. Here are the rows. If God exists and you believe in God and you act the right way, you're going to heaven? Or if it's an Eastern religion, you would be reincarnated into something good and beautiful, powerful. Anyway, it's there's a lot of reward there. If God exists and you don't believe in, in God, there's a lot of risks because you might rot in hell for all of eternity. That's, that would be bad. Or, right, back to the top. Or God does not exist. Now, if God does not exist, you might believe in God. And the outcome of that is you're probably going to live the life of a good person. You might avoid temptations and sin and bad things that you think would be displeasing to God because you believe in God. But that's all temporary. So call that a wasted life or something, but it's still temporary. Because when you die, you die. And there's nothing else because there's no supernatural. Maybe God does not exist and you don't believe in God. Is that a great outcome? Well, good for you. You were right. There's no God. But whatever goodness you get is temporary. Because when you die, you die. It's all over. So considering the four possible outcomes from the combination we get from thinking that either God exists or he does not, either you believe or you do not, we see that the best option for you, the one with the most possible good rewards, is that you should believe in God. Here are things in a more simple way. You have four options. Either God exists and you believe you get eternally good stuff. If God exists and you don't believe, you get eternally bad stuff. If God does not exist and you believe, you get temporarily bad stuff. If God does not exist and you do not believe, you get temporarily good stuff. Isn't it in your best interest to believe that God exists? 